What is going on YouTube? Hayden back and in today's video I'm going to show you how to install rear struts on a 2010 Mazda 3. Now specifically with this car this is going to be on an extremely rusty car so hopefully for you guys it'll be much easier but if you live anywhere in the Rust Belt, New York specifically for me, upstate New York, Buffalo, Rochester area, you're going to have to deal with rusty cars and I'm going to show you the easiest and best ways to change these out because these typically snap. The bolts that hold this in snap, the aluminum strut mount snaps, and I'm gonna show you how to install it super easy and it should go very smoothly. So before we get into the installation, I wanna go over the parts that you will need. As you guys know in my videos, I like to be over-prepared than under-prepared, and it's typically recommended to replace these as pairs in the back here, and that's what we're gonna do. So for starters, I got this and this together in a kit from TRQ on Amazon. All of these parts will be linked down in the description, as well as the tools that we're gonna to use. But Specifically on these, the part number is SBA28202. There are two struts, you'll see these later on. I've also ordered these top hats because these typically break. They're only made out of aluminum. You can upgrade for the steel ones, but honestly, they last a decent amount of time, especially now that I'm in Florida. So these will be just fine. And then the last thing I bought is these KYB top uh, covers and the dampeners, which you'll see later on. Hopefully I don't need to use these, but I saw some marks on one of mine. And if I need to replace it, I will. Otherwise I'll just return them on Amazon. And I'm not sure, oh yeah, the part number here, if you plan on replacing these, is SKA70459. And that's everything that you're gonna need parts wise. First thing I did was jack the car up. Now, since I'll be replacing both sides, I decided to lift the car from the subframe. There's a good jacking point there. I put the jack stands under the lower control arms because the pinch welds on the back of my car have rusted away, but either spot will work. I took the wheel off and I also used another set of jack stands as a safety precaution. With the tire out of the way, we can finally see the rear strut a lot clearer here. And you can already see kind of this wear. Now these shocks have the original 170,000 miles on the car. So I figured it's about time that we can change these out. I was also getting some weird tire wear. So that's another sign that we should replace these. But my main worry isn't necessarily this, but it's going to be this up here. Look at those bolts and look at that corrosion. This is what really needs to get changed here. And we're going to try to figure out a way to successfully get those nuts off without snapping these because these have a tendency to break like I was talking about earlier. And we'll see if this is good. Otherwise, we'll replace that with the KYB. But the first thing we're going to do is loosen up those two bolts and then we'll get the last bolt that's on this on the bottom over there. So with something as rusty as those bolts, you increase your chances of breaking them off the smaller they get. And those are pretty small. So we just can't crank on it or use an impact or we are 100% gonna shear them off completely. Now there's a, a process, obviously, at, most, at this point, most of you guys should know how to do it if you've worked on your own rusty car. If not, I'm gonna show you the steps that you need. Uh, I have specific tools for this. You guys don't need that. You can probably get away with a, a torch, but you'll see what I mean by that. But I prefer this method, especially if you work in like in a com an apartment complex or somewhere where you don't really, or you just don't trust yourself with an open floor like myself. So the best method to getting off rusty or seized nuts is heat, penetrant, and impact. You do this in this order or vice versa, this way, this way, this way, you'll be able to successfully get those off without breaking them. Now, instead of using a torch, because I don't trust myself, we're gonna use this magnetic induction heater. It's my favorite tool. Heats these bolts up red hot, super quick. We can easily take them off. Now, because we're working on a nut, what we need to do is get that nut red hot, and then we're going to unscrew it. We don't wanna cool it down like you've seen me do in other videos. If it was a bolt, then we would heat and flash and heat and cool it down and continuously do that method. But with nuts, you wanna just heat them up red hot so that they expand. Now we're gonna use some penetrant beforehand and then impact it off. I started off by soaking the nuts in WD-40 for a few minutes. Even with just penetrant, these will probably snap off if I tried loosening them. It's the heat that will make these come off like they were brand new. I used the smallest coil to heat up the nut until it was red hot and then using my mid-torque impact with a wobble adapter and a 13 millimeter deep socket, the nut came off like it was nothing. Thank you. 
as a precaution, I heated the bottom bolt as well, and you can see I'm also cooling the bolt down before I use my impact. Then the shock should just pull right out. In case I ever have to do this again, I clean the rust and Loctite off the lower bolt using a wire brush on my drill. To take the shock apart, I used my impact to break the nut free as I was starting to round it with a wrench. I used a vice grip to hold the top while I backed the nut off with a wrench. And that's the problem that I was worried about. Completely dry rotted through. I can't even, ugh. Look at that. All right guys, so check it out. Here we have the original Ford Motor Company Mazda strut. And I don't think when it, when it compresses like this, when you're driving, it's, a, it's not supposed to stay down. I'm pretty certain the new one isn't gonna do this. So this, it's a good reason we're replacing this because not only it doesn't have to leak to be bad, this should compress up. This is probably why my tires have been shot. But let's compare this now, which is slowly coming back to the new one and see if it's the same. So here we have the replacement. This is a, the TRQ one. I'm gonna compress it. You can already tell it's going straight up. Look at how much quicker this goes. Not only is it much harder to compress, but when I compress it, it goes right up. So this is how we know this will take a lot more of that impact instead of my tires and destroy my tires, especially how cheap this is. But this is one way you can tell you have a bad strut compared to a new one. 170K miles, eh, it's a bit too much. They usually only last 50 to uh, maybe, let's say a solid 100K miles, but good thing we're replacing this. Next thing I wanted to show you too. So here we have the original strut hat. You can see all the corrosion and all the salt that dumped out of this. And in comparison, let's check out the new one from TRQ is much better. Beautiful. So we're going to be replacing these. They are pretty much, they are identical. They are literally identical. So that's awesome. And then the last thing is I think we're going to have to replace it. This is the old boot. And I think I can pull this out too. And you can see it's totally dry rotted. I'm gonna to try to keep this, this one from KYB to swap it out. And it should be similar. Now these are not like specific for the Mazda, but they do work for the Mazda if that makes sense. This should be a, a similar, not identical, but similar. You can already see the difference right here compared to this. They're very similar. This KYB is a bit longer, but otherwise they're practically the same. But I figured I, figured I could probably just use the original and we'll just keep it like this instead of the other way around. And yeah, that's, that's solid because I'd, I'd rather keep the long strut cover than the shorter one because that this this should still work so let's reassemble the new strut When it comes to reassembly, the two rear upper shock mounting nuts get torqued from 17 to 20 foot pounds. You need to be really careful because these like to snap. I just use my impact to tighten these down to prevent that. Now as for the lower shock bolt, make sure to put some blue Loctite on it and torque it between 59 to 77 foot pounds. Also remember to always hand thread these bolts first to prevent cross threading. That 
is how you change a rear strut on a 2010 Mazda 3. Uh, so that's gonna be it for you, but for me, I'm gonna have to go do the other side right now. Also guys, before I forget, if you wanna learn how to replace your rear wheel bearings on your 2010 Mazda 3, then make sure to stick around to the end of this video. That's not good. <laughs> what the? Pull me closer.